Okay, wow, shiny face. Shiny McShinerson. <laughs> like a rare Pokemon card. I'm just completely holographic. Oh no! <laughs> Ahoy hoy. So it's been a while since I made, well, any video. Can you believe I've been saying that for, for nine years now? But it's especially been a while since I did a Q&A video. And a special stipulation <laughs> is that I have to answer all of the questions I've chosen nicely and honestly. You can't always detect tone over the internet. I promise you guys, like most of the time when I respond to you, I'm just, I'm just chilling and having a laugh. But I am aware that sometimes I can come across a little bit blunt and a little bit rude. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, I genuinely am. In this video, no bluntness, just pure honest truths in a nice way. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> just before we jump into it, and no, this isn't a sponsor, you don't have to skip forward like a minute and a half. My brand new single is coming out next Friday, March 12th. It's called Crying. It's a song that I started writing about three years ago. No, four years ago, actually. Oh no. <laughs> I finished it up last year. Um, it's nothing like anything I've ever done before. It would mean a lot if you followed me on your streaming platforms like Apple Music or Spotify. And also there is a link in the description below. It will take you to an option where my new song will be pre-saved to your Spotify account or Apple Music account. So that as soon as the song's released in your country, it will be in your library. It's completely free to do it and it would really, really, really help me out. I really hope you enjoy it. Please make sure you follow me on all my socials to keep up to date with new releases and teasers and trailers and everything like that. But it's the first single off of my second album which is coming out this year so I'm really excited and I really hope you enjoy it. See that wasn't so bad right? <laughs> All right let's answer your questions nicely and honestly. When can you last remember feeling fully content being a YouTuber? Oh we are just jumping right into some deep stuff already. I guess without making this into like a really really big essay I might make a different essay video on it, I don't know. I would probably have to say around 2014 to 2015, and it might not be for the reasons you think. When we talk about being content, um, I guess it's more about feeling proud of what, what I'm doing and how others perceive me and my job and what I do. I guess what I'm trying to get at is um, back then in 2014, 2015, there was like a massive sense of community. Everyone, especially in the UK, everyone was collaborating with each other. There was um, this office building in London, uh, the YouTube space where people would actually go to and film there. Everyone would see each other at events, like every YouTuber attended every event and you know, you'd see each other and you'd say, hey. And there was just this real sense of, of niceness. Um, and when the media gave one, influencer, uh, you know, a bit, of, a bit of shit. Everyone would defend that person, everyone would rally behind them and everything would be nice. You didn't always have to get along with people or be their best friend, everyone was just, there was like this sense of camaraderie and I think a lot of fans of those YouTubers as well, everyone felt like there was a stronger sense of community, like everyone looked forward to the next upload. It was a very, very, very different time and it was a lot more positive and then over time, YouTube itself became more about who could you try and tear down for views. People started turning against each other. There were times where I fell into that trap as well. Everything started to slowly unravel and I think people started to leave YouTube behind, like fans and things like that. YouTubers stopped collaborating, they stopped going to events. Um, it wasn't an overnight thing, it was just this sort of gradual decline, I think, in community. It's a real shame, but I, th I think like that's how I would describe being content in a way. I, I remember just being really, really proud to just make people happy and I felt like I belonged even though I was kind of still on the outside of a lot of it. It was probably the closest I ever felt to be like belonging. So, um, I, I guess, yeah, a good few years ago now. Is there anyone you have beef with that you really wish you don't? I don't really perceive myself as having beef with anybody right now. Hopefully it will stay that way. There have been a couple of people that I've had fallouts with over the last couple of years, um, but I think compared to how I used to be especially, um, I don't make all of that beef, beef <laughs> public uh, or, or go on about it as much as I used to. I feel like I used to drag everything out in the public eye. Um, and also I've just gotten older and realized that people just drift apart. There have been people that have gone out of their way to upset me or, you know, say some very slanderous things. I, I used to let that sort of thing really, really consume me and I sort of let it become a, this massive part of my personality, just feeling negative and not trusting people. In the last couple of years as I've gotten older, um, I guess I've just, I've just started putting my energy into more positive things. And I think if, you, if you're at a point where like you wish you didn't have 
beef with somebody, um, then you're, you're probably at a point where you'd want to apologise and sort it out. But yeah, I don't really feel like I have beef with anybody. Um, uh, if anyone has beef with me, uh, please put your hand up uh, so that I know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not so concerned with. Um, with falling out with other people and making it this big hollow blue anymore. I know, she's boring now, what can I say? <laughs> so I had uh, quite a few of you guys ask, what's crying based from? What inspired you to write crying? What's the inspiration for your new single? Crying is basically, uh, I started writing it about having to suppress your feelings of negativity, whether it's around family or friends or in my situation. Uh, I, I was getting to a point where I felt like I couldn't really fully express when I was upset with something, I felt like people would say, you know, oh well, you know, you're not, you're not in a position to complain, you can't be upset about this. Um, whereas my feelings were always completely valid, as are yours at any point. This fear of feeling like your, your emotions aren't valid or that other people have it worse so that you can't, you can't complain about how your life is, you feel like you're going to get judged. Uh, or mocked or laughed at. This song is is basically about how hard it is going through something with people just going, oh, you're always just so miserable. All you do is cry, 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 cry. Um, that's all I can really give away right now. But um, yeah, I wrote it about just how hard it is to suppress negative feelings for other people. It sounds like a really miserable song, um, but it's actually really upbeat. I can't wait for you to hear it. Next Friday, pre-save it, link below. So uh, there are a lot of questions. Uh, whatever happened to you and Dan Hardcastle? Uh, or uh, why did you stop making videos of Nerdcubed? Uh, do you still talk to Nerdcubed? Um, and I know that usually I'm a little bit blunt and abrupt with my answers on that and I'm just gonna explain why. Basically the reason that I stopped, I chose to stop making videos of Dan, it wasn't a personal issue, we never had any sort of falling out or anything like that. Our collaborations were really really successful um, and people really really enjoyed them and I'm really glad that people enjoyed the chemistry we had on screen together. Over time the comments and the messages they just became very overwhelming, sometimes insulting. People saying, you know, to my partner at the time, oh, you know, you're nothing compared to Nerdcube, step aside, things like that. Um, and that was, that was annoying. But another reason was just that I, I began to notice that when, when I would make a video that didn't have Dan in, the vast majority of comments, not just like one or two or 10%, the vast majority of comments were becoming, when are you next making a video with Dan? You know, only here for Dan. Uh, or is anyone else here just to see if Dan's here? Um, and I really didn't handle it very well. Uh, I, I wasn't good at handling that. I felt like, you know, I built my channel up based around my life and my stories. And uh, I began to feel like people were treating my channel like, like Dan's second or third channel. And ultimately the the views and the traffic and the engagement that I was getting it wasn't uh, worth how I was feeling about it. You can kind of, I, I hope this makes sense, you can kind of understand how intense it was a few years ago if now four years after the last video that we made together I still get a, a ton of questions like where's Dan, do you still talk to Dan, what happened between you and Dan, uh, even though like I said we haven't made a video together in four years. So it, it was just a choice that I had to make, um, but there was no falling out, everything is totally fine. Uh, I just keep, I keep a lot of my friendships offline these days. So yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that, uh, you know, I had to sort of pull the plug on what you guys say it was like really fun collaborations with good chemistry, uh, but I just, I had to do it for my own, for my own sake. But thank you for everyone that, you know, did find me through, through Dan's videos uh, or our videos together and are still here and actually support me as as my own person that <laughs> it goes a long way and it means a lot do you dislike any of your previous songs with a passion so uh you guys know i used to be really upfront about how i felt about some of my previous songs including the promise or uh songs like you've i've been worse in your own shoes which were never official releases i used to really regret writing the promise i thought it was very sort of corny and I think a lot of it came from me wanting to sabotage my own success to be honest. I'm a, I'm a massive self-saboteur. I strive for something to be successful and then when it's successful I reject it. I turn on it completely and that's what happened with The Promise I think. I would go on to release more music after The Promise and any little comment like you know oh The Promise is still your best song I would take it very personally. I don't anymore but I did for a very long time. That started to change Mostly around 2016 when I was on tour with Busted and I was speaking to uh, Brendan, the singer from Wheatus. Uh, we were both supporting Busted on that tour and um, we started talking about Teenage Dirtbag, which is obviously a huge, huge song, everyone knows it. And I explained my feelings about The Promise 
uh, to Brendan and I, I asked him about Teenage Dirtbag. I said, does it ever, does it ever bug you? Does it ever annoy you when people just, they, all they talk about is Teenage Dirtbag and not your other stuff? And he just said, no. Why, why would it? I wrote that song. Like, I'm, I wrote Teenage Dirtbag. I'm so proud. I'm so happy that it makes people happy. Um, and this, like, light bulb came on in my head. I was like, oh my god, I'm so pig-headed. I was just being really judgmental towards my own song simply because it made people happy. I know it's such a strange way of thinking, um, but that is unfortunately how my brain works sometimes. Uh, and ever since I had that conversation with Brendan, it's really stuck with me. Ultimately, if my songs make people happy, then that's only a good thing if you enjoy, uh, if you enjoy it, I've been worse, or your own shoes, or or tonight you belong with me, with me and Dodie, or or even even the Google Plus song. You know, if 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 those are the songs from my my catalogue that make you the happiest, I'm glad I could make you happy. Uh, I'm not gonna turn around and do what I used to do and go. So what do you think of my new stuff, huh? You know, I used to I used to kind of have that attitude a few years ago, and I'm sorry if I did that to you. I I didn't really know how to. How to, how to cope with people enjoying my stuff. <laughs> Very weird, I know. I, I know that doesn't really make sense, um, but I'm working on it, I promise. I really am. Did the mean comments on your song Dirt get to you when it was released? Uh, yeah, massively. I just remember being so excited and nervous uh, when the video went out, I remember refreshing the YouTube page at midnight and all the comments that were coming in as soon as the video came out They were all so positive because the people who were commenting straight away had been waiting up with me and were really excited to hear it And they were sharing their excitement and everything was like overwhelmingly positive and it was lovely uh, for those first like couple of days and then over time, like the next couple of days, I think people who sort of occasionally watched me or sort of watched me but weren't like dedicated to staying up or like checking something out straight away, uh, they discovered the song and they were more than happy <laughs> to give honest, their honest feedback on the song and my, my amazing dancing. And uh, you know, criticism is something that is, it's very hard to take. For, for anybody, I don't know anybody that, you know, bathes in, in criticism, especially harsh criticism. Uh, I have got a lot better with dealing with it, uh, but it still hurts. Criticism is still really, really tough to take, especially when it's less constructive and more just, this is so cringe, uh, your dancing is so embarrassing and things like that. Uh, I found it, it was quite a shock when, when the comments kind of changed from being really, really positive to more just negative, like, about the song or about me. But I, I think there's there's criticism with every song by every artist. I'm trying my best to to be a bit more positive and just look at the positive stuff and not fixate on the negative things. It's not down to me to tell you how to uh, conduct yourselves in any way, but I guess please try and imagine that you're saying these things to someone's face because artists do read uh, the things that you say. Uh, we don't just sort of upload a video and then and then leave it. Um, so words can hurt. Feedback is really good if it's constructive and can be used in a positive way. Uh, but insults, they, they, they just hurt and there's no need to be negative in that way. Uh, it, it, it doesn't do anything positive. So be nice to people, be good, be, be nice happy people, please. And that goes for when crying comes out as well. I'm not saying like wrap me in cotton wool. Is it just nice, niceness? Please. <laughs> Did you ever think about using a stage name or a different name for your music projects? Yeah, um, I'm very, very proud of my music and I'm glad I put my name to it, but there have been times where my name has been associated with, you know, being a, a, a drama addicted YouTuber who is, or isn't nice and picks fights with people uh, and is cringy, etc. And I feel like maybe some people haven't given my music a chance because they see my name and go, that's not gonna be any good, or something like that. And there have genuinely been times in the last like five years or so where I've considered releasing my music under a different name and not even, not even telling people about it just because sometimes I feel like people might give it more of a chance. Smiles, happy. Gotta stop crying all the time. <laughs> but ultimately, if if there, you know, if, when when there are people out there who who won't give my music a chance purely based on my name, those aren't the people that I should be really concerned with. I should be concerned with the people that do listen to my music 
not just because they like me, but because it doesn't matter. They they just like what they like, and that's that's what I try to pay attention to. So I won't be doing the different name thing. Uh, there have just been times where I've, I've felt like maybe that would be better for my music. How was your dad? I miss him from the old vlogs. Um, my dad's great. He's great. I miss him a lot. Um, I miss my mom as well. I miss my brother and sister. Um, I moved up to Birmingham. Uh, just over a year ago and because of the pandemic I've only seen them like twice since then. It's been very hard uh, but I speak to my dad like twice, sometimes three times a day. Uh, we're in really good contact. Obviously it's not the same as like seeing him uh, but yeah he's good. He's good. Bless him. He's uh, 73 now. Yeah everything's everything's all good. He's, he's, he's a happy bunny right now. And finally if you could tell your 13 year old self something what would it be? It can't be about your career. That's a really good question. I know it's really, really cliche when people say, I wouldn't tell them anything because otherwise they wouldn't go through what I've been through. You know, I hate that. I really, really hate that phrase, but you know what? It's kind of true. I don't think there's anything that I would tell them other than, you know, the sort of cliche, keep on trucking, <laughs> keep on trucking. Um, I don't know, I guess, I guess I would say, don't be in such a rush to have everything figured out because you're gonna be nearly 30 and you're not gonna have anything figured out. You're gonna have less to <laughs> less figured out. Stop having the mindset of um, once I have this, then things will be okay, things will get better. Like, you know, once your hair's longer, then everything will be better. Or once you finish high school, this will be better. Or, or yeah, just stop thinking about like this conditional thing. Like, you know, once this is da da, then da da da. Like, th there's nothing stopping you working on things now rather than sort of waiting for some sort of goalpost in the future to feel better about your situation. Uh, take the initiative and work on your future right now. Don't wait for your future self to take care of stuff. Sort it out now and you'll be very thankful. Well, that got deep, <laughs> but I feel like it's been a while since we did something like this, so I'm glad we sat down and did it. Thank you for watching me or, or listening to me in the background, however it is that you consume my content. I am once again asking you to pre-save my new single crying down below. Uh, I, I know that if I keep saying it, then then you might be like, well, now I'm not going to. Uh, but yeah, it's it's free and easy to do and it really, really helps me. Uh, helps me keep doing what I'm doing as well. And thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. You guys really, really do help me keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> I love you all so much. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I shall catch you later. <laughs>